Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. If you want to know why I'm highly annoyed, I'll rant about that in a moment. We'll go through the usual disclaimers and we'll make it quick this morning. For I, for all intents and purposes, thought I was done front loading because I did seven videos last night. But because my computer is epped up on stupid, it decided to lose several of my videos that I pre-made last week. So here I am this morning, angry, autistic fog brain, very firmly intact because my routine has now been thrown into the window. God, I can't even speak properly, thrown out the window. So I am miffed. And not just miffed, no, 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 no. Now I'm in autistic fog brain, so now I get to spend the rest of the day that I intended to celebrate a pool day in complete utter fog brain. <sighs> so if anyone ever asks you, but we don't understand why the routines are so important, don't you want spontaneity? I like planned spontaneity, Karen. Or I leave loopholes and various routines and alternate routines where it could be okay. Randomly, out of nowhere, throwing a monkey wrench into my daily morning is not a good idea. No, not at all. God. I need an edible or something. Angry. Angry at air. <laughs> All right, folks, in the description box, you can find a link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read. It's written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by autistics for autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals regards to the JRC so-called behavior modification program. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much they have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused, folks, so you know the drill. Please read that article and share it on all your social media. Also included in there, Neuroclastic's public statement in regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding, folks, in case the JRC actually sees through with their threat. Also included in there, the Ozarks' first article in regards to the Agape Boarding School, now known as Stone for Help Boarding School situation a so-called Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri, that takes in so-called troubled male teens that has impending over 21 civil lawsuits, claims, and allegations leveled against it, all which have been substantiated by the Missouri Department of Social Services, and they include the following. Sodomy, rape, sexual assault, child abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, child trafficking, starvation, and that's just for starters. You have one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another a doctor still on the premises with full access to the boys on multiple, again, substantiated claims of sodomy, rape, and sexual assault of the boys there. You have an attorney general too busy chasing after, lying about, and photoshopping drag queens out in this local area that is Missouri. <clears throat> Forgetting that, you know, we live here. And you got a governor off his nuts. So please, folks, read that article. Share it on all your social media and get the few of us left here with two brain cells to rub together who are too broke to GTFO. Send help. Send a rescue committee. I don't know. Just help. All right. Included also, as always, the pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including the link to the analysis done in 1999 by Dr. Fredder, which you are, we are going over right now. Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject. Juniper Masamba's behavioral sheet of shockable offenses. A clip out of the seven-hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollins back in 2002. The templates and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we discuss the JRC folks, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you do got young children present, folks, please use your headphones. This channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they're watching this, very obviously parental supervision is very much advised, all right? 
Okay, where we left off last night when I thought I was done. <sighs> yeah, I know, breathe. Although blank has an IEP priority, IEP of March to 15th, 1999, make a choice is not as clear what this means. Isn't that their ML, though? They always make things vague as hell. You know? They put no details in there. When I worked for the state folks, when I was, you know, invoked to go on the behalf of a student into an IEP meeting, even when they were doing something that the student very obviously didn't agree with, those notes had notes. You want to talk about paperwork. Okay? It was not really acceptable to put something as vague as make a choice without fleshing it out. Because making a choice could be literally anything. Dr. Matthew Israel could sit there and say, well, we did allow her to choose the chocolate chip cookie. So that's making a choice, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason why these things have to be fleshed out. And why in the name of God any parent would accept this as acceptable is beyond me. But I'll tell you why I think it is. The majority of parents put too much trust into individuals who oversee their kids for the majority of the day. My mom's more like me. We're a slightly paranoid bunch. And she already knew from previous ex experience that the majority of some of the teachers that I had really didn't have my best interests at heart. So she made it a point to read all the notes on my IEPs when we had those meetings. She made it a point to make sure I was there. That's called an ally, folks. It's a beautiful thing when it's your parent. Just saying. You can't make statements that vague, particularly when it's toward the final IEP meetings, circa middle school transitioning into high school and you're kicking in those transition age services. You gotta flesh it out. You have to. God, there are many types of choices that an individual can make, more meaningful, some more meaningful than others. Exactly my point. Choices can range from selecting between a blue peg versus a red peg to choosing in which activity to participate or to refuse participation in an activity. The earlier choice of one meaningless concrete object versus another concrete object is indeed a choice, but not one that is significant to others that actually have an impact on one's life exactly. Make a choice isn't good enough. You wanna prepare me for the real world? Give me a choice along the lines of I can spend my last $5 at McDonald's or I can take my happy ass down the Dollar Tree and get about a week's worth of food. This is the sort of things we're talking about. Choices on how to spend mon money wisely and how to make the right choice by putting tools in hands. You can't do that. When your IEP is essentially, you get to make a choice. But see, look, we gave her the choice. It was a part of the IEP and we let her choose the red peg. That's not how any of this works, Karen. Dr. Karen, this is not how it works. What book I read has no, hear me, no. Well, I can't say books because books influence me a lot and has since I was itty bitty knee high to a grasshopper. They're my escape from the ableist reality I'm forced to endure. 
<sighs> Point blank and period. That was my autistic way of escape. I knew I couldn't physically leave the proximity, so I would grab a book, and that was my form of escape. But that's a completely different subject, so sorry for rambling there. The point is, you can't say that you're meeting the goals of the IEP by saying, but look, we let her make a choice. When that choice is between whether I want mint chocolate chip or vanilla ice cream. Okay? These do not have a major impact on our lives or our ability to live independently or interdependently as the case may be out there in the real world. And I know this doctor is getting beyond frustrated, but doctors like Dr. Freda, even as backwards as they can be, as I've pointed out and I told you I would let you know, they can't comprehend that individuals like Dr. Israel and some of the dinosaurs that are left here to haunt us, like the ghost of Christmas past, are more likely hanging over our heads like the Sword of Damocles, still do not believe that we, as autistics, as disabled people, particularly I'm speaking of the nonverbals here, have the capacity to make any real life choices. That is why they will try with IEPs to do these vague make a choice between red and blue pegs because that is where they think our capacity starts and ends. This is what I mean when I say these are the kind of folks who don't feel that there's a point in trying to educate us because they don't feel like we can be educated. And I hate to be morbid and a horrible human being, but I'm just going to go for it because what can I say? I'm blunt and I don't care. Essentially, we are kind of waiting for these last dinosaurs that continue to haunt us and make our lives hell to die. So that the new school of doctors, as flawed as they are, who are actually open to conversation with the us neurodivergent folk and other disabled people will take their place and maybe finally we can progress somewhere past the 1980s and early 90s. We're going to close out on that, folks. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So, folks, please don't forget to hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time. As always, we here at Smelling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye, everyone.